Life's too short to drive boring cars. So have you been shopping for a brand new BMW? I mean, they are the ultimate driving machine. Stop! Wait, do not buy one until you watch this video. Let's get into it now. So there's four key elements that you really need to understand before putting down your hard earned dollars to buy a new BMW. I'm gonna share those with you and they are the good, the bad and the ugly. But let's get into the first point and that's understanding the history of the BMWs that you're looking for. Now understanding that there are some inherently poorer models and some better models that you can buy. The used car market's very high. The new car market is also high because dealers are no longer negotiating on MSRPs. And so you're basically walking in and paying at least sticker or even more in some cases so if you're stuck in that conundrum and you got to think about three or five years down the road on a resale that you've got a good vehicle that's depreciating less maybe and as well make sure you're not stuck with a vehicle that's full of problems understanding of course v8s typically are more problematic higher maintenance and a lot of them tend to consume oil and we'll get into more detail there inline sixes historically are the best engines in the bmw lineup stay away from the n54 though that's the twin turbo that one's a problem four cylinders they've had some good ones and some bad ones over the years Understand which ones have timing chain issues and which ones are good to go. So the second fact that you really need to try to understand is the idea behind the recalls. Now recalls are essentially an identified safety concern, often generated, tracked and communicated by NHTSA. Now unfortunately, recalls aren't uncommon for any brand or manufacturer. It's simply a matter of a bad design or an installation or engineering that creates safety concerns or a hazard. Now, unfortunately, BMW certainly has their share. You have to understand, BMWs are very complex luxury vehicles that hover on the fringe of engineering and design. And as a result, recalls are not uncommon. One thing you have to consider is, is it a matter of poor design, poor engineering, or a lack of research and development that gets them to that place? A car with more recalls is gonna spend more time in the shop. Even if the dealer does it on their dime, it's still inconvenient. You have to take your car into the shop, book it in, and if you're lucky, you even get a loaner. Often BMW isn't one to quickly give out loaner vehicles, especially for repairs that are on their cost. The other thing to consider is naturally, if they have all these recalls that are around safety, what about technical bulletins or technical glitches that could cause breakdowns in the future? I mean, there's obviously gotta be some level of consistency. High number of recalls, there's probably gonna be a high number of technical and mechanical breakdowns along the way. Just something to think about, right? So you want some recent examples of some new BMWs? Well, let's start with the latest 50,000 vehicles, huge recall impacting many BMWs as well as the Toyota Supra because they share the common platform. What that essentially is a loss of brake assist. When you go to potentially tap the start button a couple of times consecutively very quickly, or you go to touch the brake and you hit the start button just in the right timing, it can actually cause glitches. And then through the software and logic, it can ultimately jam up the pump, which prevents the brake assist from actually working. Now, while you do still maintain some level of brake, it's very, very difficult to push and you will actually lose the assist, making your stopping times dramatically worse than they would be if you had your brake assist in place. Let's look at a few. X3 M40i, X5 40i, X5 45e, as well as 540s, 340s, 440s, and the Toyota Supra. Essentially, anything with the B58 engine, it's that logic that needs to be reprogrammed. It's a simple fix, but it's essentially one that needs to be stick handled. Another recall is about 257,000 vehicles ranging from X3s, X4s, X5s, 3 Series, 4 Series, 5 Series, you name it, almost the entire gambit has the backup camera issue where logic needs to be changed because it doesn't fully engage properly and it actually doesn't meet full compliance standards. You want a few more? Well, let's start with the X5. There's actually eight in total for an X5 right now under NHTSA for 2020. One is essentially lost for brakes and ABS. Another one is front axle issues. Basically, the control arm is not welded properly. The headlights have an issue as well. You'll notice that blue beam, if they're not set up properly, they'll emit a very aggressive blue light which poses a hazard to oncoming traffic, potentially causing incidents and accidents. You can also get a loose steering shaft bearing plate and a steering rack fail altogether. I mean, if you lose your steering, your brakes, this could be a catastrophic vehicle. Now, most of them are easy to fix, but they just need to be addressed. 
Then we have an X3 right here. There's actually a total of 12 recalls for the X3 right now. If you have a hybrid version like this one is the E-Series, you can get a battery internal short, which is a result of contamination within the battery cells and it's been known to potentially start a fire. Tie rods are fragile. If you hit too many hard roads, it can break and basically let the suspension go. Seatbelt sensors, which is a problem, which doesn't always identify whether there's a passenger in the seat, obviously causing potential injury. And the steering rack has also been a potential failure point. And right there we have the M8. Now there's currently five outstanding recalls for the M8 as well. One of them is the transmission wiring harness has been known to potentially fault. They have to change or replace that. Seat belt sensors as well in the M8 as it was in the previous car. Loss of brake assist, which is something we mentioned on the first recall, where you can essentially lose your assist braking power, and which means your foot has to do all the braking. And it's the backup camera as well in this vehicle, which needs to be modified via software updates. Don't even get me started about the massive number of recalls on the 3 Series and 4 Series cars and all the others. Some of them are smaller nickel and dime that seem inconsequential. Some of them are a little more significant where tie rods or suspension parts can let go. So at the end of the day, recalls are a common issue. You just have to know what you're dealing with. So the third factoid you need to know about BMW before you buy them is BMW actually did very, very well this year as opposed to many manufacturers. For some reason, because of some of their relationships with the suppliers, they were able to attain much of the chips needed to keep their vehicle supply moving. They actually didn't miss much and there wasn't much downtime. While they saw about a $6 billion profit in this first part of the year, as opposed to the $700 million loss compared to last year at this time, they're doing extremely well. But it's not just a benefit to BMW, it's a benefit to you as well because unfortunately a lot of other manufacturers you walk on the lot if you find any cars at all you're probably gonna have to settle for an awkward color maybe a set of options or specs that you didn't really want maybe there's something you did want but they don't have that so you're sort of settling for a vehicle maybe isn't quite what you're looking for after all we pay a lot of money why not order what you want well it's because people don't want to wait BMW on the other hand has been able to keep a lot of the orders moving and processing so it's a win for them and it's a win for us so the fourth factoid that I want to point out about BMWs is that they care about the stakeholders. Yes, I know they're trying to sell a car like every other brand does, but there are things that they know go against the grain. For example, transmissions. A lot of manufacturers have pretty much eliminated and wiped clean the manual gearbox. While a lot of them went initially to double clutch, as did BMW, and a lot just have moved on to the automatic with a wet transmission or torque converter style, BMW had to follow suit as well. I mean, that ultimately is the trend, but fortunately, they still provide a manual gearbox. In the M3s, the M4s, they also provide that type of transmission as an option. Where else can you find that in the luxury or high performance world these days? Lamborghini, Ferrari, nobody has a manual gearbox available anymore. Really only BMW and Porsche can you get a manual gearbox. So it's important to the enthusiast and it's important to BMW. And the next point of supporting the enthusiast versus the masses, unfortunately is countered on the next point, And that ultimately is upgrading the style in the name of following the trends and staying ahead of the game versus the enthusiast, sadly enough. I mean, there you go, the BMW finally came up with a newer and revised front grille. Obviously, what we have here is a coupe. This is a 4 Series Coupe 430, and naturally we have the oversized, almost butterfly style grill. Some would call it the beaver teeth, whatever you want to call it. It is consistent with what a lot of the manufacturers are doing. Lexus has an oversized grill, Audi has an oversized grill. Almost every brand is doing something of that style. So for the sake of compromising that 5 or 10% that hate the new style grill, the challenge is potentially bringing in the mass majority and stealing customers from the other brands for the sake of going with that newer revised upscale style grill. And the third stakeholder that they've tried to satisfy is the environmentalist or the tree hugging style. And essentially how they're doing that is moving their hybrid and pure electric technology down the road, so to speak. Now while BMW is trailing some of the manufacturers, absolutely they are. They are in fact providing a plan to move forward. After all, in Europe, there's gonna be some strict regulations by 2035 to make sure that all vehicles are transitioned over. So you have to believe for BMW to stay current and relevant, they will be certainly moving their lineup in that direction. I mean, here's a few examples of what they're doing right now. They have the X3 and it's the 30E. It's a hybrid. They also have the X5 and it's the 45E. They have the i3, which is pure plug-in electric. And they even have a 3 Series that you can plug in as well. And it's the 330E. And then they have the wonderful i8, which proved what the exotic car could actually be. 
So as you can see, there's pros and cons in owning a BMW. You just have to decide where your priorities lie. Performance, luxury, style, and the best handling on the market. Or are you just looking for something that's simpler and gets you from A to B? That's a decision that you are going to have to make. But BMW is the ultimate driving machine and staying true to their word. With all of that said, be sure to click on that video. That's the top most reliable luxury cars available on the market today. Hope to see you real soon. Catch you then. Bye-bye.